Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking through my 10 most worn items for winter. If you've been following me for a while then you will know that I decided to start tracking how often I was actually wearing every single item in a spreadsheet a couple of seasons ago. So uh, I've been doing these every single year but this actually gives me a much more accurate depiction of how frequently I'm wearing things. It's quite windy today by the way, probably very fitting considering that this is very winter themed. So if you do hear any whistling or anything like that, um, I'm sorry, it's just the wind outside. And I'm going to start with a pair of shoes that I've actually been wearing today. These are the Eveline Dayglove Re-Knits. Now, I am such a shoe girl, I absolutely love shoes, and if you've seen any of my shoe collection videos or just watch my styling videos in general, then you probably know I have quite the collection, or at least I've definitely amassed a big collection over the years. And these shoes were just the pair that I found myself reaching for when I didn't know what to slip on my feet. I wore them more than 20 times. They are so incredibly comfortable. Now I do actually have all three styles of the day gloves. I've got them in the leather, I have this re-knit pair, and then I also have the suede, which I recently received as part of my regular gifting, as you may know that I do work with Eveline on a monthly basis, whether it's a YouTube video or a blog post, but it's always disclosed something I'm very proud of. Now these ones out of the three are probably the most comfortable. I find the leather ones do pinch across my foot, they are a little bit too tight and definitely more suited for those who have a narrow foot. I have a very wide foot and a bunion on my left foot which I've had since I was 14 so I have to be really conscious about the types of shoes that I'm getting because if they aren't wide enough then they're really going to pinch my bunion and be really uncomfortable. These ones are really malleable, very very soft, you can kind of see just how easy they are to sort of maneuver around any sort of lumps and bumps of your feet. I just find them so comfy. The sole is really lightweight and kind of bouncy I suppose because they're just rubber. Uh, I would say that the sole itself is still narrow, it's still the same cut as the original day glove, however because of the material used, these are so comfortable and these are the ones I would recommend if you've been looking at the style and you have a wide foot like me. Next up we have a pair of jeans and I don't think these jeans are going to come as any surprise. These show up in every single one of my videos except for my summer most worn. It's my Dr. Denim skinny jeans. I get so many questions about these because they are an older style. I bought them over five years ago now. However, I actually got mine tailored, so I got them taken in at the ankle and also I got the length taken up too. So unfortunately you aren't able to get them, but even then you would still need to get them tailored to get the same fit as I have with mine. But uh, I just, I can't fault these jeans. They are so stretchy, so comfortable. I find even if my weight fluctuates a little bit, I do get bloated quite often. It's just I've got a lot of food intolerances, so it's something I'm really mindful of. I still find these really comfortable because they have so much give around the waistband. Uh, the denim has just worn so well, and I've been really impressed because I've washed these so many times, I can't even count how many times I've worn them, and they've held up incredibly well. I actually am just impressed with Dr. Denim jeans across the board because I've got a few pairs of their shorts and those also hold up really well too. So I think if you're looking for a good denim brand, I think that this is a sustainable denim brand as well. Um, perhaps correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the, this is definitely a good one to look at and they are stored on ASOS as well so quite accessible um, if that's somewhere that you shop. Alright and I forgot to mention I do wear these in a size 25 and I find that they fit true to size. I will leave all of my sizing information down in the description box though, hopefully that will be helpful. The next item that I wore the most had to be uh, this cashmere sweater from Eveline and sorry I've just got it inside out, I actually had it in the washing basket because I was going to hand wash it. Something I always put off, I am not sure if I'm the only one who does this but I always find it's a bit of a process to hand wash things. Luke's actually got a couple of cashmere tracksuits and it always takes me weeks to wash them after he's put them in the laundry basket. Uh, anyway, um, this sweater here is another Eveline piece, this is their ribbed cashmere sweater in the heather grey. I have this in the size small and it's a really nice relaxed oversized fit. What I like about this is the fact that the sleeves also have a bit of volume to them as well and it's just a really nice soft cashmere. I know, I've talked about this in the past, but I do find that Eveline cashmere differs from style to style and colour to colour. So some of them are really soft and then others tend to be a little bit more rough. However, I have mentioned this before, there is a really good article that talks about cashmere and the fibres and how they wear and pilling. So again, I will leave that linked in the description box below because I do think it's a really uh, fascinating resource and will give you some good insight into cashmere quality. Uh, but yeah, I really love this. Being grey, it goes with absolutely everything. The 
this was one of the ones that I reached for a lot in the morning, especially when I was driving Luke to the train station. Uh, and it's just so cozy and warm. A really good layering piece as well. And just a good overall basic, especially if you love kind of oversized sweaters. So definitely one that I'm looking forward to kind of wearing next year. But also I'll be reaching for this a bit through the transitional season as well, I think. I feel like when it comes to outerwear, I kind of made my best effort to cycle through all of my coats. I do have quite a few. I absolutely love them all. <laughs> and it's really hard for me to pick a favorite. So I've sort of been trying to match my coat to my outfit, something that I probably didn't do so much last year. And there are actually two coats that I wore a lot this season. The first one is my Kinder Salmon Oatmeal Colored Coat. Now, I was really surprised that this turned out to be my most worn coat because it is such a light color. You would think that this would be a lot more high maintenance than a darker coat, and truthfully, it is. But I really love the style of this, and I love the shape, and I love the way that it makes me feel. It also feels really nice and high quality. It's got a nice, soft feel to the fabric. It's a wool nylon blend, so that little bit of nylon in there helps to soften up the wool. Uh, but yeah, it's just really beautiful. I love robe style coats like this. Anything that has a lot of drape. I just I just feel like they are so chic and I always feel so good when I'm wearing this. Uh, I do think this was a one size fits all and it's got a lot of fabric to it uh, but yeah it's gorgeous. I really don't have anything bad to say about this aside from the fact that lighter materials do tend to be more high maintenance but it's worn beautifully and again another one I'm so excited to continue wearing again next year as well. I feel like layering pieces were a pretty big part of my winter wardrobe, although you often wouldn't be able to see them, they were something that I used to keep myself warm. I wore a lot of my t-shirts under my sweaters, which were just fab, uh, and the one that I ended up wearing the most was my turtleneck Pima cotton stretch top from Everlane. Now, you may recall that I used to have a really beautiful merino knit version of this from Kate Sylvester, uh, and unfortunately, when Luke was building the deck, I didn't realize that he'd left a couple of screws in one of his. Uh, pairs of shorts. I washed them, the screws tore up the sweater. Uh, so I was pretty devastated, but you can always find replacements for things. This isn't exactly the same, but it really does the trick and it's been a good alternative. It's much lighter and this is very carefree and I know if anything happened to it, I could easily replace it and it's much more affordable. So I quite like that about it. And being cotton, obviously a lot more gentle, I suppose, if you've got sensitive skin as well. But yeah, this has been a great basic. I love how fitted it is and it really works under so many different pieces as a layering option. The other coat that I wore a lot over winter was my Stella McCartney Edith coat. Now you may recall that I splurged on this last year for my 30th birthday and I'm so glad I did. Although the only downside to this being so dark and the type of fabric it is, is that it picks up all of Winston's fur. He's our rag doll and he just molts like crazy. <laughs> so yeah, I absolutely adore this. The quality is just exceptional. It is just beyond anything else I have. It's very heavy weight and if it's super cold, this is the coat I reach for because I know I will be toasty and warm when I'm wearing this. It's what I took when Luke and I went to Melbourne just because I thought I would need something a little bit heavier and something that was going to keep me really warm and it definitely was a good choice. This is the coat that I would take from going home to New Zealand throughout winter just because again, so heavy really handy. Um, I got so lucky to find this 75% off. Definitely one of the perks of when you're buying pre-loved. Mine was still new with tags so that was a very lucky find. The lighting's doing some funny things but hopefully you can still see me okay. The next most worn item is another pair of shoes and they were my Vanelli two-tone pumps in the charcoal wool with the black suede cap toe. I love these shoes. I have talked about them ad nauseum on my channel. They are so comfortable and an excellent dupe for the Chanel two-tone pumps, especially if you want that luxe look for less. Uh, I really can just attest to the quality of these. They've held up so, so well. Uh, and also, I've got a mine resold just because I found that I was wearing through them and I kind of uh, damaged the heel a little bit. But I took them to the cobbler who fixed them up and honestly, they are like new again. I find that these are great for me in the winter here because our winters are so mild. They're kind of around 16 to 19 degrees Celsius on average. We don't get a lot of wind and we don't get a lot of rain during our winters. So uh, very, very fortunate, quite privileged really when I think about it. So these have been great for me because I can wear them on the milder days with a midi skirt or also with jeans. Uh, I really like the sort of almond toe detail. I think it's very flattering and quite leg lengthening as well and they are super comfortable. Sort of speaking of jeans, my other most worn pair of jeans for winter is, I mean, again, this comes as a surprise, but also probably not. My Levi's Mile High 
skinny jeans. I think these were featured in my last two most worn uh, videos just because they are sort of the white jeans that I reach for. They aren't perfect, but I think when you're building any wardrobe, you sort of just have to be realistic. You wear what you have, you wear it until you know, it's basically threadbare. And yeah, I just found I reach for these a lot. I love wearing a lighter color palette in winter. I think it's very chic and elegant uh, and it's just a little bit different. When I lived in Wellington, um, if you don't know, I actually, while I was born in Sydney, I actually grew up in Wellington. Um, I wore a lot of black in the winter time because it was so cold, really icy, or at least I thought it was, uh, and I'd wear black tights with a full black outfit and it's really hard to kind of get out of that um, I guess that habit and for me wearing white jeans and pairing that with kind of a creamy colored sweater has been a really good way for me to break out of that style right while still wearing something that feels me and feels really comfortable for me to wear. So yeah, those have been these. I wouldn't recommend these. I would say if you're looking for a high rise skinny jean in white, you might like to look at the J brand Maria skinny jean. I'll link them down below. I have had them, but not in the high rise version and they were fantastic. Uh, I think J brand do really good, really great denim. So definitely a brand to look at. Then we have the last two pieces, which are both sweaters. The first one will Probably be a bit of a surprise considering the very neutral color palette we've got here, but it is a pink sweater from Uniqlo. This is their lamb's wool sweater, and I found this just when I was browsing and I absolutely fell in love. I actually picked it up in two colors, not really thinking about the fact that the second color I bought is very similar to a Celine sweater that I picked up at the start of the season, um, but I just found myself reaching for this a lot because it's a really muted pink. It's not super girly, it's quite cool toned actually, and it goes with a lot of the grey pieces in my wardrobe. Again, another way to kind of break out of wearing all black. Uh, it's really nice and cosy too. It's not too itchy or anything like that. I find it's fine if I've got a little top on underneath. It doesn't make me feel like I need to scratch my arms or anything. Uh, it's a very boxy fit through the body and then it has sort of relaxed sleeves. This I got in a size small and yeah, I'm really really pleased with the quality of it. It's held up so well. I have thrown it in the washing machine, just put it on a cold cycle in a garment bag and it came out perfect. So uh, really happy with this. I mean, I think if you're looking for uh, well-priced knitwear um, that is pretty good quality, Uniqlo is definitely a good place to start. Then the final sweater, which I don't think will come as a surprise because this is <laughs> one of my favorite winter staples, and again, this is one I actually have uh, to go to the dry cleaner, is my Joseph Roll Neck Sweater. Now, I love this thing. I actually almost bought a very similar style in navy from the Joseph website because they were having a great sale. If it's still on, maybe I can link it down in the description box because it's worth having a look at. The knitwear is beautiful. The tailoring is divine. Uh, I just love Joseph as a brand. Um, but yeah, I you guys know how much I love this sweater. I love the fact that it is so simple, but it has little design elements that make it feel special. So it's got this rib detail on the collar, which is also down the back of the sweater and also down the sleeves. Um, the reason why I'm actually taking this to the dry cleaner is because I have gotten a couple of stains on it. I think I was eating quite messily. I usually try to be quite careful when I'm wearing quite light colors like this, but um, I think it was when I was eating some bolognese, I got a little bit of tomato sauce or something on the center and also on my sleeves. So I thought it would be better to leave it in the hands of the professionals. I am not averse to hand washing something like this, but I just think with that when there are stains, um, stain removal is something I'm paranoid about. I don't want to soak anything like this myself uh, in case I do anything wrong, so <laughs> especially when it's a more expensive piece. But yeah, love this. Um, really can't go wrong with a big roll neck sweater in the winter anyway. Uh, it's just so cozy and warm. So those were my 10 most worn items for winter. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I will probably do a little bit of a blog post as well talking about all these items so if you do want to go over to my blog and have a read of that I'll leave that link down in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to know what your most worn items of the season were whether you were in summer in the northern hemisphere having a grand old time enjoying the sunshine or if you're in the southern hemisphere like me kind of uh, trying to keep warm throughout a cold winter. If you did like this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here and you want to see more videos from me. I'll see you guys next time with a brand new one. See you soon. Bye.